assigned of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to fight against economic crimes and corruption in Nigeria has gradually revamped the country's dented image as dean of corruption. The feat is as a result of years of toil and sweat. You can be part of the struggle by shunning all forms of economic crimes and corruption. Good evening, Nigeria, and welcome to the program, The Eagle. My name is Aisha Gambari. With me on the program is Aisha Mohammed. Thanks, Aisha. A very good evening to you out there. I also say welcome to The Eagle. We hope you will keep tuning in to enjoy the program as we bring you interesting activities within the Commission. On the program today, Senate Committee on Drugs, Narcotic and Anti-Corruption commends the Commission for securing 117 convictions in 2013, just as the EFCC secures the forfeiture of Brifina Hotel to the federal government. The property is among seized assets from Shuaibu Tedi, a prime suspect in the billion Naira pension scam. Also on the program is a report on the prosecution of one Ulushola Alabi, an 80-year-old suspected fraudster nabbed by the EFCC. We will also bring to you a report on the arrest and prosecution of a Nigerian based in Malaysia, Hope Ulushagun Aroke, and his accomplice, Tafida Garba Ibrahim, who are being prosecuted for money laundering and false declaration of assets. And on our special focus segment is a report on the Commission's monthly media briefing. These and other reports will come your way right after this time out. Please stay tuned. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> I got a telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Juva Magada. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you all contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I right. embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to fly for you. A special man that you don't develop EMCC. I chose people who are doing the money to travel to other people's money. EMCC. I just have to capture them. Threats to prove his life. Chief. Jail. Jail. Ah. Are you right? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are going to die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Lamrodi, said the commission in 2013 recorded 117 convictions. He stated this at the National Assembly when the commission defended its 2014 budget proposal before the Senate Committee on Drugs, Narcotic and Anti-Corruption. He expressed optimism that the agency would improve on the record this year having already recorded 30 convictions in the first two months of the year. We have an African symmetry conviction, and I believe by any standard is, by no means, a small achievement. Um, so I don't think there is any law enforcement agency within the country that has achieved that in any high, uh, the high court level in the country. So I think uh, we have done very well, and I think we are also on the course of doing very well this year. For the, from the January to February, as I speak to you, sir, we have secured 30 convictions this year. So, and by the rate at which we are going, we see us getting not less than 150 convictions before the hour is out. He thanked the committee members for their continued support and promised that the commission will continue to do its best in waging war against economic and financial crimes. I wish to, on behalf of the board, management and staff of the EFCC thank the committee for giving us the opportunity to appear before it to defend, to defend our budget's proposal for the 2014 financial year. We strongly believe that the committee and its individual support for the EFCC will consider and approve the budgetary proposal of the 10.2 billion table before it. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and distinguished members. 
Chairman of the committee, Senator Victor La, commended the commission for the number of convictions it secured in 2013. He said the record is significant in the face of the erroneous perception by some persons that the commission was not doing much. He expressed the National Assembly's resolve to work with the commission to make it more effective. I can tell you that the perception of uh, Nigerians about law enforcement agencies is that they are incompetent, in fact, that they are corrupt. And the EFCC, ICPC, all of them put together, we are just wasting money on them, they are not doing anything. But if we tell the people to secure 117 convictions in one year, and there's potential for increase in the, in the new year, I think that is a very challenging news. To this end, he restated the committee's willingness to amend the commission's enabling law to enable the agency to keep a percentage of its recoveries. We are willing to work with the commissions to see how you can execute your mandate. When we come to your place, we told you we are ready to work with your commission to amend your law. Probably to insert a, a provision where the percentage of sums you recover can be flowed back into the operations of the commission, or even your place on outright a first night charge. These things are they are not done by board resolutions. They are legislative activities. Lamarade presented a budget estimate of 10.2 billion naira as approved by the budget office against the 21 billion naira proposed by the commission. Thelma Eke, reporting for the Eagle. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is prosecuting a Malaysian-based Nigerian fraudster, Hope Olishegun Aroki, and his accomplice, Tafida Garuba Ibrahim, before a federal high court legals. Their troubles followed the fraudster's arrest in 2012 and arraignment in January 2013 before Justice Mohammed Idris on two separate charges of money laundering and false declaration of assets. Aroki was one of two Malaysian-based Nigerian undergraduates that were picked by the EFCC in the closing weeks of 2012 at the 1004 housing estate Victoria Island, Lagos, following a tip-off. The 25-year-old indigent of Okene Kogi State claims to be a student of computer science at Kuala Lumpur Metropolitan University, Malaysia. But the commission's investigations fingered him as the arrowhead of a syndicate of internet frosters that traverse two continents. His accomplice, Tafida Ibrahim, is a Boruda change operator. Through Ibrahim, Aroki was able to launder proceeds of multiple scams to the tune of over 31 million naira. When Aroki was arrested, a search conducted by EFCC operatives on his apartment led to the recovery of several items such as laptops, iPad, traveling documents, checkbooks, flash drives, internet modem, and three exotic cars, a Mercedes-Benz Jeep, one formatic Mercedes-Benz car and a Range Rover Sports. Also being prosecuted by the commission are two employees of a telecommunications service provider, MTN. The accused persons, Victor Akintunde and Ghani Mustafa, were arraigned by the commission before illegal state high court Ikeja for allegedly stealing 1.3 billion naira belonging to the firm's cooperative society. Akintunde and Mustafa, both former president and secretary, respectively, of MTN Employees Multipurpose Cooperative Society are facing a 17-count charge bordering on conspiracy, stealing, issuant of dock check and forgery. They were charged to court alongside a property developer, Mutahiru Babatunde, and two other companies, Primavera Engineering and Construction Limited and Marble Dredging Limited. The suspects allegedly obtained the said sum as sundry payment to facilitate the purchase of 13 hectares of land at Okunwaja community in Lagos on behalf of cooperative members. 
To perfect their criminal act, the defendant forged the signature of one chief, Atiku Adigun, on a deed of assignment to facilitate the fraud. They are also accused of issuing a dot first bank check in the sum of 427 million naira in favor of the cooperative on April 25, 2009. Their trial, however, suffered a setback when one of the defendants, Mutahiru Babatunde, jumped bail. All efforts by the commission at apprehending him proved abortive. The fugitive has, however, been declared wanted by the commission. I am Zainab Sani Ahmed reporting for the Eagle. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> I got a telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah, my God. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you are killing somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey. Was you owe contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I right. embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to fear for you. A special man that you don't know of EMCC. I chose people who are doing the to support other people with money. EMCC. As soon as they capture them, threat to prison. Chief. Yeah. Jail. Jail. Ah. Are you there? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are going to die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Still, on matters in court, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is prosecuting one Olushalalaba, also known as Adekunle Anthony Okundalaye, Latif Tokumba Ali, and Magnus Obe, before Justice Latifa Okunu of the Lagos State High Court, sitting in Ikeja, on a four-count charge, bordering on obtaining money under false pretenses and forgery to the tune of 1,490,000 naira. The 80 years old man was said to have obtained the sum from one Olutonyo Ogundipe by falsely representing to her that the money was the cost of rent for a three bedroom flat located at plot 8 Oladimeji Alo Street, Lekki Phase 1, Lagos. He was arrested by operatives of the commission in February 2013. The accused person pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Now to convictions. Justice Mohamed Lawa Shaibu of the Federal High Court, sitting in Enugu, on Monday, 24 February 2014, convicted and sentenced one gift Onyegam to 10 years imprisonment without an option of fine for duping a blind teacher, Rosemary Ihekanacho, of a sum of 830,000 naira under the pretext that he would help her son secure employment with an oil company. Also convicted for identity fraud is one Habila Maman, actually known as Luca Audu. He was sentenced to seven years imprisonment without the option of fine by Justice Babatunde Kadri of the Federal High Court Gombe on 29th January 2014. Maman, who specializes in using different identities to defraud his victims, is to serve his imprisonment with hard labor. He was arrested by the EFCC based on three separate petitions against him, received from three petitioners, alleging that he obtained various sums of money from them under the false prisons, contrary to Section 8, Subsection A, and punishable under Section 1, Subsection 3 of the Advanced Fee Fraud Act, 2006. In a similar development, Justice Abubakar Kutugi of the Federal Capital Territory High Court, Abuja, on 29th January 2014, sentenced one pastor Elakpe Robos, Jr., a Filipino, to four months imprisonment for the issuance of dot check. Justice Babatunde Kadri of the Federal High Court Gombe also sentenced one Abubakar Dan Ina, alias Goni Bukar, to two years imprisonment with hard labor. The convict, who was arraigned on 3rd October 2013, was convicted on each of the two count charge of conspiracy and obtaining by false pretense preferred against him by the EFCC. Dan Ina was alleged to have fraudulently obtained monies to the tune of about 2,051,800 naira from one Alahaji Adamu Hassan, a businessman, by fraudulently representing himself as capable and possessing the power to bring Adamu out of his business misfortunes through the medium of invocation of diabolic and other invincible entities. Reporting for the Eagle, Chidima Amanambo.
is the sixth largest producer of oil in the world. In over 50 years of oil exploration, the country has earned well over $600 billion as oil revenue. If properly managed, it should provide us with a health system that will save lives and not a decaying health system. A society where energy goes round for meaningful development and not an epileptic power supply system. A productive educational system and not a decaying educational system. A society where jobs are created for self-sustainability and not a society where our youth roam the streets unemployed. A highway of safety and security and not roads that lead us to early graves. We should have credible leaders who deliver dividends of democracy to the people and not corrupt leaders who divert our collective revenue for private use. Say no to corrupt leaders. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Welcome back on the program. Next is the special focus segment with Kamele Gibi, the report. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has said it has achieved some success in the prosecution of pension fraud cases. Briefing journalists in Abuja, the agency's head, media and publicity, Wilson Ujaran, said the commission has called several witnesses in many of the cases under trial and succeeded in securing the final forfeiture of a property linked to Sanite de Shwaibu, former director of pension accounts, office of the head of the civil service of the federation, who is facing a 22-count charge bordering on obtaining money by false pretense, conspiracy to commit fraud and concealing the origin of stolen pension funds to the tune of 18.3 billion naira. The said property, Brifina Hotel, which is located at plot 1106, cadastral zone, Durumi district, Abuja, was allegedly acquired by Teddy through his company, Badawulu Ventures, for 339 million naira. Brifina Hotel, as some of you will recall, was among the properties that was uh, seized from a major suspect in the pensions come in the office of the head of service of the civil service of the federation. I'm talking of Dr. Shwaibu Teidi. That hotel, which is located at plot 1106, Cadastra Zone BO2 in Drumwe District, Abuja, was finally forfeited to the federal government as a result of the process initiated by the EFCC. He said the accused person denied ownership of the property despite claims by the original owner that he sold the property to Teddy. On the basis of his denial, the EFCC approached the Federal High Court to seek for a final forfeiture order, which was granted by Justice Adeni Ademola. The Commission had earlier secured an interim forfeiture order on the property from Justice Ademobello of the Federal High Court. Like the pension cases, the Commission has also made appreciable progress in various oil subsidy cases which are ongoing in courts. Owujaran said several witnesses have been called to give evidence before the courts in some of the cases. As we also speak, the trial of suspect in the oil subsidy matter is progressing in various courts across the, the country. In a number of the cases, several witnesses have been called. I also want to urge us to take more interest in some of these cases. People sometimes believe that we are not making progress in, in, in the subsidy matter, but I can assure you that a lot of progress has been made. Several witnesses have been called, and if, if you are a judicial correspondent out there, you agree with me that we have done substantial work on, 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 the, on the matter. But one particular case that is worrisome for, for us is the refusal of one of, one of the suspects, Shere Ogumbago, to attend his trial. He has become more or less a fugitive from the law because since he was granted bail by court, he has refused to, to turn up in court. Ogumbambo has, however, been declared wanted by the EFCC. The commission calls on Nigerians with useful information on the whereabouts of Ogumbambo to contact the EFCC at the head office or any of the zonal offices in Port Harcourt Lagos, Kano, Gombe, or Enugu. On the issue of the assets recovered by the commission from the former governor of Bielsa State, Depri Alamesia, Oujaran said it was unfortunate that some people decided to stir needless controversy in an already settled matter. In the last few weeks, there has been an issue in the media regarding the assets recovered by the commission from the former governor of um, Bielsa State. 
I'm talking of the prayer and the messiah. It is indeed unfortunate that some people decided to stir a needless controversy from an issue that is more or less settled. I'm sure that some of us who are here are witnesses to what happened in, in 2010, precisely July 10, 2010, when the Commission returned the recover assets to the Bayasa State Government. And the former, the former governor of that state, Mr. Timipre Silva, was on hand to receive those assets from the former chairman of ESC, Mrs. Farida Waziri. I recall that on that occasion, among the assets that the Commission returned to the Baisa State Government was the Chelsea Hotel in Abuja. Apart from the Chelsea Hotel, assets that were returned include three billion one twenty-eight million three hundred and thirty thousand twenty-nine naira eighty common. Also returned was um, four hundred and forty-one thousand US dollars. 7,000 euros and 22,000 pounds. Those assets were returned in line with the judgment of the Federal High Court that handled that matter. Oujaran said it was gratifying that the Bielsa State Government acted responsibly by distancing itself from such action. It is rather unfortunate that somebody decided to make another media issue out of a matter that is more or less uh, settled. But I'm happy that the Baisa State Government took steps to deny, distance themselves from that action. And as I speak to you, the matter that was injected in court has been discontinued by that government. He, however, assured that the Commission is willing to listen to complaints on any case or cases investigated by it, so far as such requests are not frivolous. Of course, I want to reassure Nigerians that if there are any issues arising from any case that the Commission investigated, either in the past or recently, that the Commission, as, as a responsible corporate organization, is always willing to revisit such issues if there are complaints. But I want to also let you know that we will not succumb to any blackmail from anybody. Owujaran further disclosed that the EFCC has stepped up the investigation of judges and other judicial officers accused of corruption. According to him, some of the judicial officers have already been quizzed by the agency, while others are still being expected to report for interrogation. The head, media and publicity, seized the opportunity to inform the media about the condemnable attack on one of the operatives of the commission, Jonathan Bardi, by a suspect, Tajuddin Oluwanishola. The operative of the commission was knocked down by Oluwanishola with his car in order to avoid arrest. The suspect has, however, been arrested by the commission and will be prosecuted. On March 18, in Bagada Estate in Lagos, an operative of the commission was knocked down by a, a suspect that was fleeing from arrest. The name of that suspect is Tajuddin Oluwanishola. He is a suspect in an internet banking case that the commission is. Uh, investigating. A team of operatives for the commission actually went to uh, effect his arrest, but on citing the team, he voted and in the process he used his Honda car to knock down the operatives. And we have to we have to rush him to the military hospital in Yaba where he was treated. I want to stress the fact that this incident more or less brings to fore the kind of hazards that operatives of the commission face in the discharge of uh, our responsibility. No, Aisha, that was really serious. Did you see that? That was heartbreaking. Very hazardous. Yeah. It shows the hazard that comes with the job of fighting economic crimes and corruption in this country. I pray God continue to protect all our operatives against future attacks. And as for Jonathan Barde, Aisha, yeah. Think we wish him a quick recovery. Yeah, we wish yeah. him a very speedy recovery. Well, that's it on the program. I remain Aisha Gambari saying, God bless Nigeria and thank you for watching. The Public Interface Unit of the Public Affairs Department of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC is driving a national discourse online every week. Our focus is good governance as it affects the anti-corruption crusade in Nigeria. Please join us on Google Plus by searching for official EFCC or official EFCC NG at gmail.com. When signed in, your Google Plus account and follow us via a Gmail account. You can also join us on official EFCC forward slash Facebook.com or follow us on Twitter at official EFCC. You can also watch our activities on official EFCC forward slash YouTube.com. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.